Alright, so in this video we're going to look at a couple of things. So we're going to look at the common prefixes that are used to indicate orders of magnitude and then we're going to look at how we can perform some basic operations with numbers of different orders of magnitude. Alright, so let's start off uh, with some common prefixes. So these down here on the left are the sort of long like, versions of the prefixes. What we've got here is some examples of them being used, and then what I'm going to do is look at the powers of 10. Okay, so femto is the smallest prefix uh, you're going to be expected to know. There are smaller ones, but uh, this is the smallest to be expected to know. And a femto is um, 10 to the power of minus 15. And what you can see here is what a femtometer, which is a very small unit of distance. It's about the order of magnitude of a like a nucleon, so some a proton, neutron, that kind of thing. Next one is a is pico, and what you can see there is a pico second, and this is a ten to the minus twelfth second, so a tiny unit of time. Next, we've got a nano, and nano indicates 10 to the minus 9. It's probably the easiest one to remember because the letter and 9, there we go. And that what we see here is a nano amp, so something you are gonna might come across when you're looking at the photoelectric effect is they measure current, tiny current, so like nano micro amp type thing. Um, so micro, as you might be of guess, spotting the pattern, is a 10 to the minus 6. So what you can see here is a microgram. It's typically the kind of um, mass measurements you get uh, if you look at sort of like medication stuff. You'll see like active ingredients listed in micrograms because of tiny amounts. Onto the scales you're probably more familiar with. Milli, uh, you'll come across like millimetres. This is a millisecond. Milli it indicates 10 to the minus 3. Uh, the next one in like logically would be 10 to the 0, but that's just normal, so that's no prefix, because that's just one. So the next prefix we come out is kilo, so you'll be familiar with kilometres, so that's 10 to the 3. Mega, uh, with some, some of you more computer literate might have heard of things like megabytes, gigabytes, that sort of thing. So mega indicates 10 to the 6. So you'll most likely come across these when you're looking at sort of like space distances, that kind of thing. You get like mega meters or mega newtons in terms of large forces. Giga is 10 to the 9, so uh, 1 billion. And then Terra is 10 to the 12. So we're talking very large scales, so large forces, large distances. We're talking space type things here. Okay, so those are what the symbols mean. And now we need to make sure that you can deal with things which are in different orders of magnitude. So as part of a calculation, you might, for example, need to add 10 to the 5 to 10 to the 7. So you can only add numbers which are of the same order of magnitude. So the first thing we need to do here is essentially convert them to the same. So 10 to the 5, uh, we'll just delete right as this. And we'll need to convert the other number into the 10 to the 5 as well. So that would be 100 times 10 to the 5. 10 to the 7 is 100 times bigger than 10 to the 5. Now we have them in the same order of magnitude. We would have 101 times 10 to the 5. That's not typical standard form, because typical standard form has one number before the decimal place. So it'll be 1.01 1 .01 times 10 7 there, which you kind of expect is slightly bigger than this 10 to the 7 number, so you're adding a small fraction essentially. Okay, so let's look at subtracting. So we'll go through the same process, but then at the middle stage we'll just subtract instead. So we have 1 times 10 to the 9 minus 1 times 10 to the 8, which is equal to. Um, 10 times 10 to the 8 minus 1 times 10 to the 8. So this is where it's different. That just seems to be 9 times 10 to the 8. And now we don't need to make an adjustment for that um, because that's already just one number. It's actually 9.0 uh, times 10 to the 8. When you're multiplying, what you do is you add the powers. So here, what we effectively get is 1 times by 1 times 10 to the 3. So it's just 1 times 
Something people very often forget to do is multiply these two numbers at the front, like we've got here. So watch out for that. So that's multiplying. So in multiplying, you see you add the powers. So dividing, I anticipate you subtract them. So let's do that again. So you've got 1 times 10 to the 3 divided by 1 times 10 to the 5. So just like before, we've got 1 over 1, so I kept it as simple. And then that's going to be multiplied by 10 to the 3 over 10 to the 5, which equals 1 times 10 to the 3 minus 5. So you've subtracted them. That's 1 times 10 to the minus 2, which is the same, by the way, as uh, 1 over 100, or 1 over 10 to the 2, if you like. The last one we need to deal with is raising them to a power. So what we effectively, 10 to the 4 squared is essentially 1 times 10 to the 4 times by 1 times 10 to the 4, right? uh, which we can express as 1 times 1 uh, times 10 to the 4 times 10 to the 4, which is 1 times 10 to the 8. So effectively what we've actually done is we've done, uh, what we've got is 1 times 10 to the 4 times by 2 in there. So when you're raising to a power, so 10 to the power of 4 to the power of 2, you're effectively multiplying those numbers there. And what, you'd, uh, what you've what you actually got as well is you've effectively got this 1 being squared. So don't forget the number in front at all times. Okay, so that's your prefixes and orders of magnitude.